Hello, hello, hello. What is up? How are you doing? Happy Saturday. It's me, Alexis Olson, coming to you live from the beautiful, gorgeous, one and only Missoula, Montana. If you are on here live, we're going to be getting into it. We're going to be putting on our scientific hats and chatting today about the difference between fat loss and weight loss. Some things to watch out for when you are tracking fat loss and really just ways to like set yourself in a good mindset to actually be measuring fat loss and not be getting distracted by all these things that actually don't have anything to do with fat loss but might have everything to do with weight loss and there is a difference so we're gonna get into that today if you are on here live please comment below hashtag live and if you're watching the replay please comment below I just spit please comment below hashtag I miss you and I will say I miss you back so if you don't know who I am or you're new to my page, please comment below hashtag new new, especially if this is your first time tuning into any one of my lives or interacting with me at all. So a little bit about me. If you're new here, I'm a certified personal trainer. I've been on my own health and fitness journey for 11 years now and have gone through all of the trials and tribulations until about three years ago, I finally found some success and some sustainable practices in uh, sustainable fat loss and so I help women uh, get on track and equip them with knowledge that they can keep for life and really feel confident and empowered about knowing that they're on the right track so I'm also a certified nutrition specialist among other things um, so anyway let's get into it so if you're someone who's excited to hear about this or hi Tiffany what's up girl so someone's video chatting me right now <laughs> I literally needed to turn my notifications off before I came on here because I'm having like a flood of messages come in right now and text messages, but that's okay. We're not getting distracted. I'm here with you right now. So if you're someone and, you know, feel free if you feel comfortable, if you're someone who considers yourself on a fat loss journey and maybe you're a little bit confused, please drop a three in the comments below. I just want to know who I am speaking to directly if you resonate with this. So a couple of things to just get out of the way. Again, remember, we're putting on our scientific hats here. Um, we're thinking about this with reason and logic and science. So here is the thing. So oftentimes what I see is I'll have clients weighing themselves every day or just a lot and wondering why. So thinking that there's a direct correlation between what they're doing or what they're not doing and the number up on the scale. And that's that doesn't show the big picture, right? So that's a little bit of, if we're thinking about this from analyzing data or statistics, one, there's not enough samples uh, to actually make correlation or actually make a conclusion about what is happening with your habits and what you see on the number on the scale. And so I will also say that the number on the scale is just how much you weigh. It is true. I, I don't, when, when people say the scale is a liar, I don't believe that because the scale is telling you how much you weigh. <laughs> like when we go to the airport and we put our luggage on the scale to see how much it weighs, we don't question if that's right or not. Like, that is the weight of our luggage. That's the weight of our bag. So the scale is correct. The scale is not a liar. However, it's not showing the big picture necessarily. So some things that could be the reason why the scale is going up or your weight is going up could be a lot of things. So we have water retention, number one. And for women, we retain more water during certain times of the month. But also, you could be retaining water if you've had a lot more sodium, if you aren't hydrated properly, uh, depending on things. If you've been having a lot of sugar, you can be retaining water. All of those different reasons could be why the scale is up. And as you know, when we retain water, that does affect the number on the scale. So that doesn't mean that you're necessarily gaining fat. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily off track. It could be because you're just retaining water for those number of reasons. So the second reason why the number on the scale could be going up day after day or week after week is um, has to do with your digestion. So like to be quite frank, 
maybe you haven't taken a poop in a while and that could be why the number on the scale is a little bit higher or going up. Um, so depending on your digestion and your bowel movements, that can absolutely affect the scale as well. Now, some other things that could affect the scale is um, if you're gaining muscle, right? So muscle weighs more than fat. So if you're lifting and you haven't been lifting, that could be why the scale's going up. So it's not showing that you're losing fat, but you are gaining muscle, which weighs more than fat. So the scale could be going in that direction. It could be going up. So now, how do we actually measure fat loss, right? That's what everyone wants to know. So if you can't necessarily look at the scale and trust that the scale is telling you that you're making progress with your fat loss, then how can we use the scale to measure fat loss? And are there other ways we can, we can measure to see if we're on track and if what we're doing is actually working? So yes, there's absolutely more ways that you can do this. Let me take a sip of my ketones. So the first thing when it comes to fat loss is I talked about putting on our scientific cap, um, thinking about statistics, thinking about analyzing data, needing to have enough samples to analyze what's happening. So I say this because if you are, if you know anything about research, for example, if you read a study that was conducted and the participants, uh, the number of participants was maybe 10 people that they did the study on and then they give you their findings, that is not really a strong, most likely, or most of the time, that's not really a strong case study because there's, that's only 10 people. You know what I mean? There can be so many other hidden factors. So that's not really a great resource unless that study was repl replicated a hundred times, right? So keeping that in mind, you weighing yourself even for a week every day is not a lot of samples. So what we look for in fat loss and what I look for with my own fat loss journey when I am in a fat loss phase or when I'm working with a client and I'm taking them through a fat loss phase, I'm not looking at what the number is that day. What I'm looking at is a month, 60 days, 90 days, where are we trending, right? So are we trending downward? Are we, are we having new lower weigh-ins overall? And that's going to give us a better idea if you're actually losing fat. So for example, with my, my journey, I pretty, I don't weigh myself every day, but, um, sometimes I do. And it just depends. Like sometimes it's every day. Sometimes it's like every three days. Sometimes it's like once a week. Now I have a really healthy relationship with the scale because I know all of these things and I know how to change the number on the scale. And I also know how that that takes time. So that because I have like such an objective and healthy relationship with the scale and mind you, Hey mom, and mind you, I have not always had a healthy relationship with the scale, but I do today. So weighing myself every day or every few days or every week is not a problem for me. So I do think that if you struggle with it and you haven't really um, solidified in some of these concepts and some of these, uh, this knowledge, then maybe it's time to take a break from the scale and focus. There's tons of other ways to focus on your fat loss until you can get more of an objective view on it. So that's my little riff on the scale. So, but to paint a picture of what I look for when I am in a fat loss phase, this is what I think about when I look at the scale. So usually what I usually teeter around my high weight is usually 148. My low weight is usually 143, um, 141, 143. So that is my normal range lately of, of what I weigh, right? So when I'm in a fat loss phase, I might be tracking my weight and I don't write it down necessarily, but you could, that would be definitely more scientific. And hi, Anna, thanks for being on here. And so what I do is I, I see, I'm like, okay, am I, am I weighing in more on the higher range more often? Or am I starting to notice that when I do hop on the scale after a month, two months, am I weighing in more frequently at the lower weight? And if I'm weighing in more frequently at the lower weight, I know that I'm starting to slowly trend downward, right? 
and I don't have a ton of fat to lose. So for me, it's slower. Um, and I like to eat. <laughs> um, so then what I start to look at, if I notice that I'm starting to see more of my, uh, lower, the lower range weigh-ins, if I'm starting to see that, I start to also track and notice, am I having a new way low in over X amount of days, right? So it could be over like two weeks is pretty good. Um, a month is even better. Two months, three months, even better. Like it sometimes takes a while to figure out uh, like what you need to be eating, how much you need to be eating to be in a fat loss or a calorie deficit. And so then I, I start to notice like, okay, am I starting to weigh in at 141? Do I hit a new low weight and weigh in at 139? When that starts happening, because that has not really at all ever been my lowest weigh in, I can then confidently say that, okay, this isn't just because I'm, um, my water retention is really low or non-existent. This isn't just because I took a, a poop. Like this is actually accurate because I don't ever weigh in at 139. So I know I am starting to lose fat. Um, most likely. Right. And you know, hopefully it's not muscle I <laughs> that I'm losing. I eat enough protein. So I know intuitively that the newest low weigh in isn't because I'm losing muscle because I'm I'm doing things to make sure I'm not losing muscle mass, right? I'm eating enough protein, I'm lifting weights, I'm maintaining the muscle mass that I've built. So that is how I measure. Those are some of the ways that you might be seeing the scale go up. Some other ways that you might be seeing the scale go up is if you're so the question that I get asked is Alexis, I'm eating less and I notice the scale is going up. So my first question for you is, well, how long has the scale been going up? Is it really going up or are you just weighing in at that higher range and you want to, you know, start seeing a new low weigh in? So that's my first question is, is it really going up? Like how long has it been going up? If it's only been a week, it's probably not because of anything that you're doing it's probably just because of that water retention, uh, needing to take up, haven't, haven't, have not had a bowel movement yet, whatever. It's probably some of those things or putting on muscle, right? And none of those things are bad. That's just how the scale fluctuates. So my second question then is if you're eating less, how much less are you eating? Are you eating too less? If you're not eating enough, the scale could go up because you could be putting yourself in starvation, um, that starvation um, place or whatever, and state. And really, I mean, this is the thing that's <laughs> that like I fight so hard as a trainer and have throughout my years of helping people on their fat loss journey is you have to be eating enough to fuel your metabolism to trigger it to start using fat for energy. And there's so many, and this is why people need personal trainers, and this is why I will never be out of a job, because that is difficult to do on your own if you don't have training or um, your emotions are invested, which a lot of times our emotions are connected to our weight or our image or, <clears throat> you know, whatever. So the things that I look for when you know, to figure out if people are eating enough to be in a fat loss phase is, um, are you eating enough protein? So protein is the most thermogenic uh, macronutrient out of all of the macronutrients. And the main macronutrients is, as we know, are protein, carbs, and fat. So if you're not eating enough protein, protein is very thermogenic and it fuels your muscles. It maintains your muscles as well as helps build your muscles and muscle burns fat or the more muscle you have, the higher your metabolic base um, rate is, meaning the more calories you burn just day in and day out, even if you're not exercising. So if you're not hitting that protein goal, then that could be why, but you're still eating less, that could be why you're seeing the scale go up because your body doesn't have enough energy to burn fat for fuel. So another reason could be that you're just not eating enough for how much you're expending. So if you 
you know, if you drop your, your calories or your macros too low and expect to lose weight, like for me, that worked when I was a teenager. For me, that, that worked at some point, but eventually my metabolism caught on and, and was like, homegirl, like we see what you're doing. This is not enough to sustain us. This is not enough to start burning your fat for energy. We're going to, um, cons- conserve all of the fat that we can and even and any time that you do eat, we are not going to use it necessarily for energy. We're going to store it as fat because we're worried that you're not going to give us enough fuel. And our body's number one job is to keep us alive. So anytime I do eat, even if I'm only eating a thousand calories a day, which is by no means enough at all, like you should never be on a thousand calorie diet, um, let alone 1200 calorie diet. And So anytime I eat, my body's going to be like, whoa, like we need to save this because we don't know like when you're going to feed us enough. So instead of burning fat like you think you're doing by putting yourself on a low calorie diet, the opposite happens and you start gaining weight. So the metabolism is very smart. It wants to keep us alive. It wants to make sure we're prepared, right? So those are some of the things my what I tend to do when I'm designing a a plan for a client and what my trainer when I was working with an online trainer do um what she had me do or what she did for me was my goal is to always make sure that someone is eating as many calories as possible while still trending downward with their fat loss now it might take time to see that because it might take time to figure out what that sweet spot is and exactly where we need to be for um, sustainable fat loss. And it's different for everyone and a calculator is not gonna tell you and your Apple Watch or your Fitbit is not accurately telling you how many calories that you're burning. Those things just aren't right because nothing can measure um, a, like, like uh, precisely, nothing can precisely measure exactly how much you're expending Um, through your workouts or through just your normal day and therefore no calculator can tell you exactly how much you should be eating so it really is a trial and error process and that's why I only work with clients for a minimum of three months because sometimes it does take that first month or two to figure out what that sweet spot is and it could take even longer if they're not eating as much as I'm telling them to eat because then I don't have any I don't have enough information to pivot from to figure out what adjustments we need to make because I don't have that baseline of what I've given you that you've been following. I don't have that feedback from that, that I've given you, right? I don't, I don't have that data. And so that could take longer depending on how closely you're adhering to the macros that I assigned to you. Um, so that's a little bit about my thought process on fat loss and, um, always, always, always the best way to measure is going to be like measuring right so um and photos because the scale isn't going to tell us everything it doesn't tell us the whole picture so i'll often have people step away from the scale if they're not seeing what they want and start using measurements and using photos um because sometimes we can see that in those places first before the scale catches up and starts accurately showing that downward trend which takes time so That's my little spiel. If you have any questions, please comment below. Um, If you're curious about diving deeper in this and you want someone to help you through it, um, please comment a four below and I will make sure to reach out to you. And then if you have any other questions or topics that you want me to go live on and kind of dissect for you and break down into some bite-sized pieces that are understandable, please let me know those questions in the comments below and I will take those and use them for future lives. So Happy Saturday. Have a beautiful weekend. Meal prep. Take a walk. Uh, Walking is the most underrated tool for fat loss. So make sure you're getting those steps in. And I love you so much. And I will see you soon.